Welcome back to the channel, guys. You guys absolutely loved my last video about the one rod and reel combo you need to do almost all of bass fishing. And in that video, I asked if you guys would like to see a three rod and reel combo set up that can cover pretty much all of bass fishing, anything you could possibly run into, whether you fish from a kayak, a bank, whatever. I know a lot of people fish on a budget uh, and I want to try in this channel to show a little bit more on how to make fishing more affordable. I know it's a very expensive hobby, uh, but I wanna try and show different ways to do that. And this is one way when I first started bass fishing, I had three rod and reels and they covered pretty much everything I needed to do. Fished from a bank a lot, I fished from a small John boat, this is all I really took with me when I fished and I was able to use all my techniques. It's nice to have extra rods to be able to not cut baits off all day, but if you could only have three rods, these would be the ones that I would pick. So we're gonna run through those in today's video. Stay tuned and let's get right into it. So the first setup we're gonna start with here is actually going to be the one I talked about in the previous video. I'm not gonna go as in depth because we have three rods to go through today. So if you wanna check out this video that I'm talking about, it will be linked at the end of today's video. Now this setup right here, this is going to be your workhorse rod. You're gonna do almost everything you need to do with this guy right here. Uh, I would highly recommend getting a seven foot to seven foot three medium heavy action rod. Mine here is a seven foot three. This is the Dobbins Fury 734. Medium heavy is recommended. This is rated as a heavy and it's gonna show that on the screen here, but the Dobbins rods run a little bit lighter than what they're ranked on the blank itself. Um, so this is actually more of a medium heavy setup. It's not really a true heavy action rod. It has the same specs as almost every other medium heavy out there. The fast action is very important. That's gonna allow you to do pretty much anything with this technique along with your real choice here. Your reel, if you go with a seven one to one gear ratio reel, this is a Luz LFS speed spool right here. So $100 reel, a little bit over $100 rod. This $200 setup right here will do almost everything in bass fishing. The seven one to one gear ratio reel will let you do all sorts of stuff. You can fish moving baits if you need to and just reel slower. You can fish chatter baits on here. You can fish Texas rigs. You can fish lipless crankbaits. I do most of my fishing with this setup right here. So that's gonna cover pretty much everything uh, as your basic. This is gonna be your, your base that you build the rest of your arsenal off of. So you have to have this setup before you get any of these other rods just because the other ones are gonna be a little bit more specialty and limit you more than if you just had this one. When it comes to your line, for picking line, you can go braid, and I have braid on here right now, just because I got back from Florida. So I was actually throwing a swim jig on this rod down in Florida with 30 pound braid, another technique you can do with this rod. However, if you, this is your only medium heavy setup, I would not recommend to put braid on here. What I would actually get is 15 pound test fluorocarbon. That would I would run straight 15 pound test fluorocarbon. It will allow you to do all kinds of stuff. You can throw treble hook baits, you can throw the spinner baits, you can throw bottom bouncing baits. You can do everything except top water if you have fluorocarbon on this rod. So I highly recommend that guy. That's gonna be what you're looking for to get this arsenal started. The other two we're gonna go a little bit more in depth on. And the third one, you're actually gonna have two options. It's gonna depend on where you fish. So after I purchase that setup right there, this would be the next one I would purchase. However, most of you probably already have this setup. You probably purchased it before the bait caster because this is what everybody starts on when they fish. This rod right here is a seven foot medium power fast action rod. I would highly recommend this one. Don't get a medium light. Don't get one of the shorter combos that are like six foot eight and specified towards drop shot fishing. I would get the seven footer. You can do every technique you need to with this spinning rod right here. A medium fast action, super basic spinning setup. I have a Shimano Sedona on here. This is the 2500 size. This is a $70 reel. This is a custom rod I built myself, but you can get a Dobbins Fury of this guy as well for around 100 bucks. So again, another $200 combo and you're ready to fish again. So that's what I would recommend there. And then when I'm choosing my line, this is what's gonna give you the versatility that you need to make this arsenal even smaller. You're going to go with straight braid. I use the lime green suffix 832 and 15 pound test. 
and you're gonna be able to tie a leader on here depending on the technique that you're doing. So if you're fishing very clear water in a drop shot or a Ned rig, you can tie six pound fluorocarbon on here and fish that just fine. You're good to go with that technique. If you're trying to skip docks with it out of a kayak and you need 10 or 12 pound tests so you don't break off on fish under the docks, instead of needing a second spinning combo or taking the line off and re-spooling it, you can just tie a 10 or 12 pound leader on that same braided line and this braided line is going to hold up under the docks as well. So this will allow you to do a little bit of everything, wacky worm fishing, drop shots, Ned rigs, all of your finesse fishing, finesse swim baits I fish on this rod. So you can do a lot of techniques with this guy. I've even fished shad wraps on this in ponds in the spring with an eight pound test fluorocarbon leader, fished a micro crankbait like that with a very tight wiggle and caught fish 38, 39 degree water temperature using this setup right here. So this is gonna be the next one. This is gonna get you about the next 10% of your bass fishing. So if that first one did about 80%, 85%, this is gonna get about the next 10. And then the last rod you pick is going to really round out those techniques, except for the specialty techniques like deep crankbaits, magnum swim baits, stuff like that. You're physically going to need a specialty rod just for that stuff. But if you're fishing on a budget or fishing ponds, stuff like that, you're not gonna be throwing those techniques that often. So these would be the ones I would recommend. So let's jump into the next two here. We'll talk about why you need each one and which one's best for you. This is gonna depend on where you fish. So up here in the Northeast, this was actually the one I went with before this guy. Uh, this one right here is the Dobbin 703. And now again, this is gonna be rated as a medium heavy. This is more a medium action rod. So this rod right here is a seven foot, medium power, fast action rod. This rod is going to allow you to fish more treble hook baits, jerk baits even. And then the benefit I had with this rod, so since I have a third setup now, I usually would spool it with 12 pound test fluorocarbon. I would fish jerk baits in the spring, winter, fall, in ponds around here, or I'd throw small crank baits or lipless crank baits. That would be the rod that I would use for that. When summer would roll around, I would take this off and I would put braided line on here, like 30 to 50 pound braid, and I'd fish my topwater walking baits, buzz baits, poppers, a whopper plopper. You could even put a frog on here and it would work in ponds. Um, it's not the best setup for that. So a lot of the three rod system, you're gonna have to fish baits a little bit out of what is the ideal rod for it. Uh, but I fished a frog on this rod many a times in a pond just because I had braid on it. So I was able to bring a braided rod, a fluorocarbon bait caster, and a spinning rod with me, and I only have to carry three rods. So that little system right there, I could fish any technique I could possibly run into while fishing at a pond. Now, if you fish in a place you never fish a jerk bait, you only fish dirty water, you don't throw crankbaits that much, you don't like to do that kind of stuff as much, that is when I'm gonna go with this guy right here instead. This is a seven foot three heavy action rod. And I have the same seven one to one gear ratio reel on here. This is actually a Bass Pro Pro qualifier, but you could put an LFS speed spool on there. This rod is the Falcon uh, Buku rod. I actually won this at a college event, but you could also get the Dobbins 735 Fury. That rod would do the same thing. I used to actually have that rod and that's what I used, but I broke it fishing a mag draft one day. So that's gonna be one of the first techniques right there, mag draft. You can start to play around with some smaller swim baits, a six inch swim bait you could fish on this rod just fine. What I do is I put 65 or 50 pound braid on here, you can flip vegetation. If your pond has a lot of vegetation, you can do some punching, some light flipping, stuff like that. You can throw a frog very effectively on this setup right here. You can throw a whopper plopper. You can throw a buzz bait. You could throw a small spook. Um, you might not keep the fish on as good. Again, that's not the ideal frog rod with the jerk bait set up there. This wouldn't be the ideal spook setup, but you could do it with this rod. Uh, just change out your hooks for a little bit heavier hooks and you should be okay. So you can do things outside the comfort zone. Summers, that's what I'd put on this rod right here. Winter, spring, and fall, I would put 17 to 20 pound test fluorocarbon on here. I could drag football jigs offshore in some of these ponds if you have some places that are a little bit deep and rocky, uh, but you don't like fishing a jerk bait as much. I could throw mostly just jigs is what I would do the, the most of, but you could have a second Texas rig rod for some heavier cover. 
Um, you could fish swim baits. You could fish other types of swim baits, like a hollow belly swim bait. You can do all kinds of stuff, swim jigs. Uh, basically anything that's a big single hook bait, you can throw on this setup right here. So if you like fishing more of those power techniques, the swim baits, the uh, frogs, stuff like that, I'd go with this guy. If you fish more clear water and you like treble hook baits, I would go with this guy right here, the 703. But that is going to be your specialty rod in your arsenal. Realistically, I could get away with the first two that I talked about and do almost everything I need, but one extra setup and you can do even more and have that second choice on your bait caster setup. One can be braid, one can be fluorocarbon. It gives you more options just by adding that one combo in. So. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Pick this one however you like on the last setup there based on the conditions that you fish. And if you enjoyed today's video and wanna see the original video about that first combo, check this one out right here. Hit the like button down below if you did enjoy today's video and make sure you hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up. Thanks for watching.